but we're going to talk about nursery rhymes. I'm going to tell you a story about why I actually created this workshop and why I teach it. It is one of my most favorite ones to teach because we really show how nursery rhymes are very educational. Years ago, I was teaching up in a high school and I just mentioned in passing, make sure you do nursery rhymes with your children. And one young lady raised her hand and she said, I will never do nursery rhymes with my kids. And I just sort of stopped and paused and I looked at her and I said, well, why? And she says, well, don't you know about Ring Around the Rosies? Does anyone know the history of Ring Around the Rosies? Mary? I've heard that it's from the bubonic plague. The ring was around this rose-colored patch of skin before the person would die. Ashes, ashes. You'd have to burn the bodies to help keep the disease from spreading. Okay, and she said, why would I want to teach my children about death and misery? And I thought of all the times I'd played Ring Around the Rosies with my children and my grandchildren, and it was fun. Now, we're going to pause here, and Mary was right. The nursery rhymes actually gave an oral history of what happened in the past. Isn't that interesting? With ring around the rosies, a pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down, we're able to learn about other histories. Years ago, we didn't have television, internet, um, telephones where we could Twitter and Facebook about what's going on halfway across the world. We had to have an oral history. And so most nursery rhymes do have an oral history and I think it's interesting is, could you imagine having to describe your life in four lines and what happened? The most important events of your life? You know, it just sort of depends on the day with me, what I talked about, but being able to remember that. And so nursery rhymes are a history. And one thing that um, I, as I was studying nursery rhymes, um, I came across a study and it really struck me, and I'm going to share the findings of this. This was by, by, done by Mirando Publishing, and Tony Steed um, said that in 1945, an average school-age child had a vocabulary of about 10,000 words. Now, I'm thinking an average school-age child would be a third, fourth grader, okay? 10,000 words. He compared the same... Um, age of children in the year 2000, okay? And he defined that their vocabulary was, do you think it was higher or lower, Liz? Just a guess. You'd think higher, but I, we don't talk as much as we used to. Okay, sure. all right. And so I, you're going to die, or not die, you're going to be very surprised as I was when I saw this figure. Instead of 10,000 words, 2,500, 75% reduction. That's incredible. I mean, think of your paychecks, <laughs> 75. And not very many years, we've seen a decline in a child's just vocabulary. In the study, he goes on to say that nursery rhymes are the bread and butter of literacy. Any ideas what that means? Any, any idea what bre bread and butter means of literacy? The bread and butter of literacy means the very basics, the very basics. He goes on, and I want you to listen to this quote. He said, listening comprehension precedes reading comprehension. For a child to ever learn to read, they need to hear those sounds and hear those stories before they can learn to read. And so as we're doing nursery rhymes, they actually are educational. Yes, they're a lot of fun. And as you do them with your children, they bond you to your children, but they're also educational. And so today we're going to take how they're educational, how they teach children, and how you can use them in your home to actually make sure your children are ready so they can read.